At one point in time, Jack Perry was seen as one of AEW's biggest stars and a pillar of AEW. But after a series of events that took place backstage, Jack Perry has been off TV for over six months with no return in sight. And it can be argued that this happening is entirely Jack Perry's fault. So like the video and let's talk about it, let's talk about the brutal downfall of Jack Perry in All Elite Wrestling. We don't do Jack Perry was signed to AEW as an AEW original when the company first formed in January 2019. At the time, Jack Perry was only 21 years old, had been wrestling for about 4 years on the independent scene as Jungle Boy, and was set to make his debut at Double or Nothing in the Casino Battle Royale, which he did but failed to win. He'd wrestle again at the next two shows, first in a 4-way match at Fighter Fest, and then in a tag team 3-way match at Fight for the Fallen, where his team with Luchasaurus called the Jurassic Express would debut. He of course would lose both of these matches and then the Jurassic Express were joined by Marco Stunt, remember him, and would face SCU at All Out, losing once again. And in the early days of Dynamite, Jungle Boy would be a regular fixture on the show, but for the first couple of months would continue on his losing streak, losing week after week. But despite being on a losing streak, Jungle Boy and the Jurassic Express were one of the most over acts in the entire company. And when Jungle Boy challenged world champion Chris Jericho to a time limit draw in December 2019, before finally picking up his first AEW win in January 2020, Jungle Boy got even more over. But when the pandemic struck in March of 2020, it would halt future storylines and future plans for the company and whatnot, but Jungle Boy would remain a regular fixture on AEW TV and would continue working as both a singles and a tag wrestler, challenging for the tag titles numerous times in 2020. And Jungle Boy had some great matches this year too, particularly the TNT title match against Cody Rhodes and also his match against MJF at Double or Nothing 2020 were both great matches. Matches. And he would finish off the year of 2020 with 48 matches for AEW. He was working hard, and 2021 was more of the same as crowds would return and Jungle Boy would become a fan favourite and start being labelled as one of the pillars of AEW, aka a future star. And the Jurassic Express would have a very successful 2021, as during 2021 they got rid of Marco Stunt from the group and replaced him with Christian Cage, and they would start feuding with the Super Click made up of Adam Cole and the Young Bucks. The two groups would wrestle numerous times in different combinations over the months at the end of the year, exchanging wins. Before at full gear, the Jurassic Express and Christian Cage defeated the Super Click in the biggest win of Jungle Boy's career. And then a few months later on the first Dynamite of 2022, the Jurassic Express defeated the Lucha Bros to win the AEW World Tag Team titles, Jungle Boy's first championship in AEW. And the Jurassic Express would have a very solid title reign with the AEW Tag Titles. Titles. They defended against the Dark Order, Private Party and the Gun Club on episodes of Dynamite before beating Red Dragon and the Young Bucks at Revolution in a huge win for the both of them and a great match. They'd defend the belts more on TV and then again at Double or Nothing in another triple threat tag match, this time involving Team Taz and Swerve in our glory, before losing them to the Young Bucks in a ladder match on Dynamite in June of 2022, ending their reign at 161 days and then right after the match, Christian Cage would turn heel on Jungle Boy. And Jungle Boy and Christian Cage would then start on a long-term personal blood feud, as he was now on his own after Luchasaurus would join up with Christian, and he'd start using his real name of Jack Perry. And while that was the start of something new for Jack Perry using that real name, it was also the start of something new for Christian Cage, as he would start roasting him for being fatherless. And this feud was meant to be the start of something great for Jack Perry and his new babyface run, but it ended up being the start of something great for Christian Cage instead, who would beat Jack Perry in just 20 seconds at All Out 2022. Sheesh. 
Regardless though, Jack Perry would go on to defeat Luchasaurus at Full Gear 2022 and then would beat Christian Cage in a final burial match at Revolution 2023 to finally end the long feud, which in the end didn't really get Jack Perry over at all and did more favours for Christian Cage than it did for Jack Perry like intended and his babyface run wasn't quite hitting the spot and he didn't connect with the fans just yet. Jack Perry would then go straight into his first world title programme challenging MJ MJF alongside Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara who were also challenging MGF for his title as they were doing a four pillars four way match and this match would happen at double or nothing 2023 and while it was a really good match in my eyes the feud and the storyline leading into it and the build up was just not compelling in the slightest and Jack Perry especially was not compelling or charismatic enough in this feud to make people want to see him win the world title and the storyline itself was overbooked and didn't do the world title any favours or anyone in the match any favours. By this point, it was abundantly clear that Jack Perry needed something new as the fans weren't invested in him at all as a babyface and did not connect with him and AEW recognised this and looked to shake up his character and revamp him. And this rebrand would take place at Forbidden Door 2023 as after being defeated by Sonada at the show, Jack Perry would turn heel by attacking and turning on his friend Hook and thus would begin the run of Hollywood Jack Perry who was now acknowledging his Perry name and acknowledging his famous father. It was an interesting idea for a character, but it was up to Jack Perry if he could pull it off or not. His next match would be against Hook at Blood and Guts for the FTW title, and he would come out on top. He'd then defend the title against RVD successfully, and while Jack Perry's heel run was definitely an upgrade from what he was doing before, it still wasn't hitting as much, but it was a good start. And hey, he even has a match set for All In, AEW's biggest ever show, against Hook, which is great for him, right? Well, it's time for me to talk about one of the incidents in AEW which I've avoided talking about on my channel for the longest time, and that's because I avoid at all costs talking about the CM Punk AEW incidents, and that's for no other reason other than that they've been talked about to death. But I guess I kind of have to talk about it now, so let's keep this snappy because you probably already know the story. We all do. Leading up to All In, Jack Perry caught heat with CM Punk backstage when he wanted to use real glass for a spot on TV and CM Punk prevented it from happening because he thought it was unsafe. Then fast forward to Perry's match at All In against Hook where Jack Perry slams Hook into a glass windshield and turns and shouts to the camera proudly, Real glass, go cry me a river. A very clear shot fired at CM Punk that of course got the attention of CM Punk backstage and after Perry lost to Hook and went backstage he was met by an angry CM Punk and now there are various reports as to what happened some say Punk put him in a chokehold some say Punk threw punches before being pulled away and others say that the two just bumped chest before being separated but regardless this incident led both men to be suspended and CM Punk to ultimately be fired as he supposedly got in Tony Khan's face and Tony Khan felt threatened for his life which means that when it comes down to it, Jack Perry is the reason that CM Punk left AEW and returned to the WWE, which is just crazy to think about. The entire landscape changed because Jack Perry made a comment about real glass. And that match at All In was Jack Perry's last and most recent AEW appearance. He's still signed to the company, but since his suspension, he has not came back, not been mentioned, and with how stacked AEW's roster is now, and all the new signings that have came in, I struggle to see where Jack Perry fits in with the AEW roster if he is to come back to the company anytime soon. But while Jack Perry has been away from AEW, he's been busy in New Japan Pro Wrestling, because after debuting for the company at Battle in the Valley, now being known as The Scapegoat, he joined the House of Torture stable and is now now wrestling for New Japan regularly with no sign of an AEW return anytime soon and if we're being honest nobody is really demanding an AEW return anytime soon either. But that's it from me guys and that's the story of Jack Perry in AEW so far. Whether he returns and can get back to where he once was and bounce back remains to be seen but I personally don't see that happening. Like the video if you enjoyed, comment down below your thoughts on Jack Perry's AEW run so far and what videos you want to see next. Subscribe for more wrestling content and I'll see you all soon.
goodbye and keep on rolling.